Hello horror fans and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube top 5 scary videos. The place where we collectively sigh at the whole of New England and gently let them know that they've got a bit of a ghost problem and should probably seek help. What's going on guys? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. As always, I'll be your spirit guide Jack Finch. As we saw on over the state lines and shriek like the blood curdling witches of Salem and take a look at the 5 most haunted places in New England. Before we begin this foray into the frightful world of New England, you know the drill by now. If you're a fan of this video, the spooky northeastern coast, or just top 5 scary videos in general, then it would be highly appreciated if you hit that thumbs up button and let the bell toll, the subscribe bell that is, so you can stay up to date with our latest and greatest uploads. New England, geographically speaking, is a region that comprises the six northeastern states of Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut, that has a rich, weird and oftentimes creepy history hallmarking itself as one of the most haunted hotspots on the paranormal planet. It is also the point where colonial American folklore first began following the established Jamestown settlement in 1607. In 1620, Puritan separatist pilgrims from England established the Plymouth colony and the rest, as they say, is history. And with a lot of history comes a hell of a lot of haunting. Kicking off at number 5, Dudley Town, Cornwall, Connecticut. And what a mysterious place it is. Dudley Town, founded in the mid 1740s, was a small settlement located in Cornwall, Connecticut, and later abandoned sometime in the 1800s. It has everything you could ever ask for when it comes to a haunted New England village a vanished family, a plague of ghosts and demons, and an ancient curse that made its way to the New World. As the legend goes, the area where the town was first located was owned by a man named Thomas Griffiths, the first to settle in the region and soon after to mysteriously disappear. Then followed Gideon Dudley in 1747, the man who the town is named after and his two brothers who would become known over the years as the men who brought the curse that has allegedly plagued the region ever since, causing the small area of Dudley town to fall into ruin. According to legend, the curse began in England in 1510 after an Edmund Dudley, a patriarch of the family, tried to overthrow Henry VIII but failed and was later beheaded. A curse was then placed on the family which stated that all of the Dudley descendants would be surrounded by horror and death, which manifested itself over 200 years of complete misfortune until the family made their way to the new world where they all mysteriously succumbed to plague and famine. Take a hint, eh? And next up at number 4, Emily's Bridge, Stowe, Vermont. You might be asking, a bridge can't be scary, right? But let me tell you, yes it can indeed. Built in 1844, Goldbrook, otherwise known as Emily's Bridge, is a single lane, 50 foot long bridge where local legend believes a girl with a broken heart took her own life and since then haunts the area as an angry spectre. Sometime in the mid 1800s, Emily was supposed to meet her lover at the bridge as they planned to elope together and leave their disputed family. Families. She waited and waited, but he never showed, and Emily took her own life in a savage fit of desperation, hanging herself from the rafters with her own cloak. As local legend goes, tales of cars being mysteriously clawed as they pass the bridge are frequent, and stories of bloody scratches down the backs of crossing pedestrians are more common than you'd like to know. It's said that if you park your car on Emily's bridge sometime between midnight and 3am, then you can hear the dragging feet of a hanging corpse scrape against against the roof of your car. I wouldn't recommend doing that though. Creeping in at number 3, the Snedeker House, Southington, Connecticut. We've covered the Snedeker House multiple times in our recent run of Ed and Lorraine Warren content, but it wouldn't be a New England haunting list unless the haunting in Connecticut made it. After all, the New England Society for Psychic Research had to have its beginning somewhere. The Snedeker House was formerly a fully functioning funeral home and mortuary, where local legend describes the owners as being necrophiliacs and unleashing a rancid pit of demonic energy into the world. Heavy stuff. The Snedeker family would later move in to be closer to their son Philip who was receiving cancer treatment at the nearby hospital. Well, of course, that's when the demonic possession began with Philip being the first to be allegedly tainted and then later the majority of the family falling victim to satanic deeds. Some of the paranormal activity witnessed is pretty prolific including documented apparitions, flying objects causing injury and the water running a thick, 
dark red with blood. Ed and Lorraine Warren both said that it was one of their more terrifying cases and it stands as an obelisk for paranormal enthusiasts the world over. Next up at number 2, The Bloody Pit, North Adams, Massachusetts. Ah, this creepy tale just really strikes a chord with me, so listen in. Located between the town of Florida and the city of North Adams, the Hoosack Tunnel is a 5 mile railroad tunnel that passes through the Hoosack Range, an extension of Vermont's Green Mountains. Hoosack is an Algonquin word meaning place of stones and has an appropriate meaning to the tunnel's dark, bloody past. Work began in 1851 and wouldn't be completed until 1875 going nearly $20 million over its budget. It was an economic disaster of a project and with disaster often comes death. During construction, 193 workers lost their lives in deadly accidents, leading the surviving workers to dub the tunnel the Bloody Pit. The deadliest of these incidents occurred on October 17, 1867, where workers were trapped in a tunnel shaft after a gas lamp had leaked and ignited, causing a naphtha explosion to collapse the area that they were working in, rain and debris and pieces of iron on top of them. 13 men were trapped 538 feet beneath the surface as the chasm began filling with deadly fumes and overspill water from a collapsed pump. After declaring that there were no survivors, rescue attempts were cut off after just a day. But it wasn't until several months later after the deadly fumes had cleared that workers made their way to the bottom of the shaft. There they found that several victims had actually survived long enough to build themselves a makeshift raft in an effort to keep themselves from drowning. They'd scratched marks into the walls, a countdown of the days that they'd survived before suffocating when they finally realized that rescue would never come. And finally, at our number one spot, Lizzie Borden's house, Fall River, Massachusetts. Well, this can't be a New England haunting list without mentioning the most notorious New England homestead of all time, Lizzie Borden's house, and the bloody legend of the axe murders. As the rhyme goes, Lizzie Borden took an axe and gave her mother 40 wax, and when she saw what she had done, she gave her father 41. The case of Lizzie Borden has fascinated unsolved crime enthusiasts for well over a century, and few cases have struck a chord more than the axe murders of Andrew Borden and his wife Abby. Mainly because of the macabre, bloody details of the case, but also because of the unexpected suspect, the quiet, respectable, and demure Sunday school teacher Lizzie Borden. The entire town was in utter shock when Lizzie was accused and charged with the murder of her parents, and even more perplexed when Lizzie was later found not guilty, leaving the case to crumble into the forgotten ranks of unsolved murder mystery. These days, the Borden House operates as a popular bed and breakfast where fans of the haunted tale can stay overnight in the same house that harboured the bloody, brutal murders. The most popular room requested is the bedroom where Lizzie allegedly murdered her stepmother. Well, whatever it takes for a good night's sleep. I guess. What do you guys think? Did we miss anywhere in our tour of Haunted New England? Would you like to see a part 2 of this series? Let us know in the comment box down below. Cheers for sticking around Fright fans, it's been a joy making this video for you all and I hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to continue with your horror binge then feel free to hit that playlist floating shortly above. As always, I've been your host Jack Finch, you've been watching Top 5 Scary Videos and until next time, you take it easy.